Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Chances are you felt a little bit of anxiety at one point or another, maybe before you started a new job or before you got surgery, but some people live with anxiety disorders, which are much more persistent and severe than normal feelings of anxiety or nervousness. Almost 30% of adults will be affected by these conditions in their lifetime, which begs the question, what are anxiety disorders anyway? People with anxiety disorders frequently experience feelings of excessive fear, worry, and panic in normal, everyday life. They may be grocery shopping and suddenly feel a wave of terror for no reason at all. Their heart rate skyrockets, their breathing quickens, adrenaline pumps through their body. They eventually calm down, but it isn't always momentary attacks like that. Oftentimes, it's persistent, hard-to-control fear that affects people's everyday lives. This anxiety and the coupling symptoms like trouble concentrating, fatigue, and even gastrointestinal problems are very difficult to deal with. As is with all mental illnesses, anxiety is not just an overreaction or a personal weakness. There is science backing up these diseases, so telling someone to relax or let it go can be pretty insulting. These conditions are deeply rooted and it's not that easy. Anxiety is believed to start in the amygdala, the brain's so-called fear center, where emotions are processed. Neurotransmitters then alert the sympathetic nervous system of the perceived threat. This is when muscles tense, heart rate and breathing speeds up, and blood flow is rerouted away from the abdominal organs towards the brain. This is our body's fight or flight response, or its way of telling us that we're in danger. This bodily response is what happens whenever anyone feels panicked, but brains with anxiety disorders experience something a little different. These conditions are characterized by differences in neuroendocrine, neurotransmitter, and neuroanatomical functions. To put it simply, these people's brains function differently. They also appear to have unbalanced activity levels in different parts of the brain, more activity in emotional centers versus higher cognitive centers. Some of these abnormalities are so major that they can be seen on brain scans. While the exact causes of anxiety disorders aren't fully understood, there are a number of things that can increase your risk of developing one. If you've been through a serious trauma, you're more likely to develop an anxiety disorder. Genetics, certain personality types, and other pre-existing conditions have also been linked to these illnesses. Regardless of what may have caused the onset of an anxiety disorder, there are a number of different types you can have. General excessive, uncontrollable nervousness is called generalized anxiety disorder. Agoraphobia is extreme fear of being trapped and unable to escape. The fear of being embarrassed in social situations is social anxiety disorder. Panic disorder comes with extreme sudden panic and impending doom. Specific phobias of things like heights and snakes are also considered anxiety disorders. About 30% of people with anxiety disorders go through life without seeking treatment, but as horrible as these conditions are, they are treatable. Benzodiazepines and antidepressants are commonly used to treat anxiety. Talking to a therapist is very helpful too. CBT, or Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, reduces anxiety by creating a new way of thinking, reacting, and behaving. Those with anxiety disorders are often advised to avoid alcohol, drugs, and caffeine, and to exercise regularly. Other self-care techniques like meditating and yoga can be effective in lessening anxiety too. And remember, there is no shame in seeking help to improve your mental health. Links to free resources are located in the description below. So do you have any tips or tricks to calm yourself when you're feeling anxious? Let us know in the comments or tell us what should we talk about next. If you found this video helpful, check out our video on depression. Depression can be more than just bad feelings. It's also been linked to chronic pain, immune system problems, heart disease, and hormone imbalances. In fact, physical symptoms are often the first sign of major depressive disorder. My name is Blacko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.